Hi everybody and welcome to my studio today. My name is Lana Lamb and I am an acrylic decorative artist and I want to say thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're going to pick up a paintbrush and paint with me today. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're there, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I post a video. And please like, comment, and share my videos. Every bit of it helps me and I just appreciate and love every single one of my subscribers. I am so thankful for you. All right, so what are we gonna paint today? We're gonna paint this bee on this pillow cover, but you can paint it on anything that you want. Now I used fabric paints on this. You can use acrylic paints and add a fabric medium. Um, you can just use acrylic paints if you don't plan on washing it much. Um, but uh, I personally never had paint not come out of my clothes, so <laughs> I think if you paint it with just straight acrylic, you'd be okay. It's just that it might take a little bit more paint than it will with a fabric paint, because the fabric paint is made for fabric. Um, I've got a stencil up here. Let me get to my stencil. And this will be new on my website soon. Let me talk a little bit about the pillow cover just for a second. This is going to be a new product on my website. The pillow covers will be in a variety of fabrics. Um, they are 16 by 16. They fit a 16 by 16 pillow form. You'll just be purchasing the pillow cover unpainted. Uh, you don't have to paint on it, you can just purchase the cover if you like. But the proceeds from these covers will go to help St. Jude's Research. That is my goal for this year. So if you see a fabric uh, cover that you like, I would grab that cover. Um, some fabrics I can still get, some fabrics I can't. So um, I'm excited about this endeavor to help raise money for them. Now, back to our B here. I will have the line drawing on my website to purchase. Um, it is a two page um, line drawing, so it's $2 for my website to just download to, to your computer and print off. Um, you can make it any size that you want, you can put it on any surface that you want. Um, but um, I didn't do a packet for this because it's such a simple design. Um, there are limited colors. I will have the colors limited. Uh, I will have the colors listed below this video on YouTube in the description below it, and on my website um, with the picture for uh, the line drawing. I will also list in there in the description on my website the paints that I used. I mean, it's just a few basic colors, so you should have these colors on hand pretty easy. And I hope that a lot of you are spending your, your time being creative and doing something that makes your heart sing. So with all that being said, let's turn around to my paint table and let's paint this adorable bee. Alright, we are going to start a uh, project here where I'm going to paint on some fabric for you today. This is one of my pillow covers that will be available on my website soon, if they aren't already by the time this video comes out. And I've just put a piece of cardboard inside of it. I covered the cardboard with Glad Press and Seal and then I wrapped the cover around it. And this is the bottom corner of the fabric here. So we're going to paint this uh, bumblebee on here. So I want to start with my yellows on here. And I'm using the DecoArt So Soft Fabric Paint. And I'm going to put a bright yellow out, which this is bright yellow. And then a little more muted of a yellow out, um, antique gold. And I think I might put a little bit of orange out. I may add the orange later. Um, I'll put it. I'll put it on my plate, but I may add it later. And I'm not really sure how much. Oops, that needs shook up much better than that. I haven't used my fabric paints for quite a while. And I actually think that. I might go ahead and take my Identa pen. 
This has a fatter nib at this end and a narrower one at this end. Okay, And I think I'm going to draw my wings on um, because they have those delicate lines on them. So I traced my pattern onto tracing paper and then transferred it on here with some gray graphite. And so now I'm going to draw the wings on with all of their little delicate lines that are in them. this narrower end. I still want the wings to remain a little bit more on the delicate side. Even though they're great big. Okay, and then we're just going to put some some little lines in, in the wings. Pretty easy little process there. It's almost like making stained glass. Just put some random little lines in there. I may come back and use the, the fatter end on this. I just, I don't want my, um, lines in the wings to be so dark. Let me grab another pen. This one might be running out of ink. Let's see if I have another one handy. Maybe I don't have another one handy. To get another one out. Just kind of be a little creative with your lines. They don't have to be perfect by any means. Okay. You can kind of see those lines in the wings. I may have to darken them up with some paint. I really don't want them to be super dark. But we're going to work on the body. So um, on the body here, uh, we've got this, this line here that comes across. It's, it's kind of eyes out there. And uh, then we're going to have some black across here, and then a banding of yellow, and then a, another banding of, so, body comes out here. I don't know if you, how well you can see my line, so I'm trying to get it where you can see it. Actually, I think I want all oh, this to be black through here. Yellow, I think I'll bring this black down. I only want one stripe of yellow on the upper part of the body. So I'm just going to grab a flat brush and get it wet. And we'll start adding some of this paint in here. So I want to add the yellow first. And I want all this section right in here be yellow. I'm going to put some white out, I think, so I can make that yellow a little bit more opaque. It's going to lighten it up, but it's also going to make it a little bit more opaque. And then I'll come back with another layer of just yellow. I have not washed this fabric, so I'm just going to fill it in for now, just a, a, a yellow color. This is a pale yellow because I added some white to it, and then this will be yellow in here. Okay. 
And we'll come back and add some brighter yellows on here. This is a, well, this should be a pretty fast project. I also have a small canvas that I will be painting this design on. So I'll show you how to do that with a fun little background. Okay, and then we've got some more yellow down here on the tip. Now you're really seeing where we're forming this B at. Now if you do not have fabric paints, not to worry. I generally just use straight acrylic paint. Um, I get paint on my clothes all the time and I can never get it out. But um, if you are concerned, we have a fabric medium through Deco Art that you can use. And you just mix it with your paint. Um, mix two to one with the medium. So two parts of this, I'm thinking, to one part of paint. Mix two to one. Okay. So you have that option as well. I want to let that dry just just a little bit. Um, on my wings, I, I want them to look transparent. I really want my lines to be a little bit darker here. Okay, I grabbed me a new IdentiPen. My other one was almost completely out of ink, at least on the short nub. I'm just going back over my lines because I really need them to be darker. That looks so much better. sell these pens on my website so most places sell them I think most art supply places so now we can see a much better detail in the wings darker lines but still thin lines so when I put some stuff over that, it will not wash it out of there. Okay. Um, black paint. Let me get some black paint here. Okay, let's confine my paintbrush. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put some black in on the sections where I want black paint. And you can use a much bigger brush than what I'm using here. And right now we're just doing some basic fill-in block painting here. We'll be coming in and adding much more detail. We're just mapping out where we're going. And it's very important to have that cardboard underneath or something underneath separating the back of your canvas. And I like to put glad press and seal on my cardboard so the paint that goes through the fabric, because it will go through the fabric, will not, um, I won't be sticking to the cardboard. That will keep it from sticking. So that's like the back of the head part, and then we have the starting of the body part here. So we'll try and create a little bit of separation there if we can. It's maybe a little bit more difficult with black to do, but 
we shall give it a shot. Grab some more black paint here. This is like just our underpainting, like we would do on any other painting. So we're definitely starting to look more like a bee here. Now it's up to you if you want to come and make a little bit on the tail, a little bit down here. Coming off the end of the tail. Sometimes I like to do that, sometimes I don't. Really kind of depends on what you like. So I think I'll put a little bit right there because that's fun. Okay, so on the wings, I want them to be pretty transparent. So I'm going to take some white here and work it with a little bit of water. Okay, actually I think I'm going to squirt out some fabric medium here to thin my paint down just a little bit, see if that will thin it. I want my um, white to be almost transparent here. A little bit of white with my medium here. We're going to bling up the wings. You know me, I'm a blinger. And I may come back over those lines and brighten those lines a little bit. I haven't decided that yet. We'll see how it looks when it dries. mix mix just brush mix it don't feel like you have to brush a whole mix a whole bunch of stuff here okay those two look pretty good fun is this it's gonna be so gorgeous when we get down here we're still in the ugly ugly stages here it's the hardest stage to get through Some transparent wings, that's all we're going for here. Okay, those look pretty good. We'll come back with some glamour dust later. Alright, let's 
let's start working on the yellow here. See if we can get some color in there. Grab some of this darker yellow and have them both on my... I'm just on the edge of the brush, just kind of pulling and stroking. And fabric can be a little bit harder on your brushes, so if you've got some older brushes that you don't mind using, but still have pretty decent edges. It's okay if we go up into the black or down into the black. Grab a little bit of this lighter yellow. And stroke a little bit of that in there. Put a few yellow strokes here and there. Alright, let's work our way down into this other section here. Still in our ugly stages. Don't get too excited here. going to be a pretty awesome bee, I think. I'm not going to keep it so tight on the edges out here. I will be bringing that out a little bit fluffier out there. That's a good start to our yellow. I want to take my uh, identipan while that yellow is drying and try to form some of the legs. I'm going to use the fat nub now on this and uh, see if I can create some legs. You, I just drew lines here, but you'll probably want to draw your pattern a little bit better. going on there. I'll fill that in with some paint. And then this leg comes out. I didn't draw my line in the same place that I'm putting it, right here. something kind of like that. Again, don't have to be exact or perfect. We're just kind of going for a look here. This is a big B, so his, his legs are going to be kind of lot going on here. I think this one needs to be longer. Gonna match that one. And then we'll have one coming off here. Okay. 
Okay, so there's the, the four back legs. Okay, so let's go up here and do this leg. Again, you'll, you'll want to trace your lines probably. And then we've got this one here. And I'm not going to do anything fancy to the antenna. They would have these little hairs coming off of them. But um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to draw them in. And maybe add some highlight on them here in a little bit. So let me grab a small round brush that I can fill in. These legs. And we'll just paint them in black. And we'll come back in and add some highlights on them. Now I just freehanded mine, but um, we'll have a pattern. So you don't have to worry about freehanding. sure nothing on this bee is going to be exact so this is just my interpretation went for a walk with my husband this morning and two big bumblebees started following me don't particularly like them to follow me I try not to bother me bother them but they kind of freaked me out when they started doing that I'm like I'm just walking here. I'm just walking. This leg over here is a little bit fatter. But That's okay. Fill it all in with some black. To make little hairs coming off of these legs, which we might we might do that. I haven't decided yet. I, I want it to be a little bit more realistic than playful, but and and that's where you can um, kind of make it how you like it if you want it to be more playful. You can do that. But if you want more realistic, then you can also do that. Hey, he's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Um, I want to work some more on the yellow. So I'm going to go back into my yellow and white mix and make a little bit of a lighter yellow. I can start adding some highlights. I think I'll make the highlight coming down the center of the bee's back. So we'll keep more of the lighter yellow through here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Ooh, flame water. That 
water went everywhere. Goodness gracious. Okay. Um, I want to create a little bit of a blue. Let's see if I can make a pretty blue here. I have to get a different green. Let's go with some yellow and some green. I'll have to get a different color of blue. I mean a different color of green here. Okay, I don't have a blue in um, my fabric paints. So I'm going to use just a DecoArt acrylic paint and add my fabric medium to it. And um, I'm trying to decide which color that I want to use here. I think I'll go with the bright bright blue color and add a little bit of medium to it. I want to put a little bit of this on the wings. Just out here. Almost like a shadow color for the wings. White's going to make it a little bit more opaque. Just a little, 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 little tint of it. Or a lot of tint. That was a lot of paint there. I'm just continuing to work it out of my brush all the way up that wing. Paint out my brush, grab a dot of water here. There we go, that gives it a little bit more of a transparent look. I like that. Okay, I'm going to darken up out here on this outer edge. I'm going to take my darker yellow, which is um, antique gold, and put a tiny little bit of black in there with it. And put some of this color out here on the outer edges. I'm going to come back with that brighter, brighter yellow here in just a minute. This is kind of like the shading out here. Oh, that's a lot of black. Don't want that much black. Okay. Clean that color off, and I want to go into my bright yellow. I'm going to put a little bit more out here. Of it, so I can have some fresh paint. And let's put the 
this through here. Put a few stray ones in there. This really is a pretty fast project and it's up to you how little or how much detail that you want to add onto this B. So now I want to put some white in here. And I'll come back and brighten this here in a little bit when I get done with the black. And I'm just going to stroke a little bit in here. Kind of tell us where we're going. And now we're going to work on some black. I'm going to put a little bit more out because we're probably going to use a little bit more. So I'm going to load my brush up with some black. Pull a little bit into the yellow. Kind of start blending that. I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat up here. We'll add some highlights and stuff up in there in a minute. So we're starting to pull some of that black into... I'm going to do the, the lower parts first and then I'll come back and work on the other. So I'll need to turn it a little bit more towards me. and vary it how it goes in there. Don't make it all the same. Okay? And we'll come back with some yellow and bring a little bit of yellow back into that black so it all kind of blends together nicely. direction. Don't worry if you get too much black and yellow or too much yellow in the black. It's easily fixed just by coming back with the other color. Take a little bit of white and mix it into that black. And we're going to create a little bit of a highlight out here. And a highlight here. Just so we can see our separations a little bit. black because we want some highlight through here. I'm going to come back with some yellow here in a second. I'm just starting my highlight in my black section. Okay, it 
it's starting to look like a bee, isn't it? Looking so cute. All right, I'm gonna come in with my uh, two yellow mix here. And pull some of this yellow. You wanna make sure your black is dry because if you don't, like that, I just streaked it into my yellow, but you could the yellow and the black, when they mix together, could make a green color, which you may not necessarily want. And some of this black is still pretty wet. So I may have to wait just a little bit. Yep. I'm going to have to wait just a little bit for that black to dry. It's all going to become green. So I'm going to grab a liner brush and thin a little bit of this black down. And we're going to create some little hair things coming off the legs. So this is where you can decide how much detail you want to add to your your B. little hairy legs. I don't think they have too many coming off of the opposite side, but it's my creative license here, so I'm gonna do it what I think. Some hairy little legs there. Go up and do these two up here. I still need to put a second coat on these legs. Now the antenna, if you want, it does have some little fine hairs that come off of the antenna just a little bit. You can do that or not. I wasn't originally going to, but since I put all the little fine hairs everywhere else, we'll do that. Okay. I'm going to add a quick little second coat on here. Get my bigger your round brush here. That's a quick little second coat on the legs there. It's looking pretty good. 
Okay. I'm feeling that the blue is just a little bit bright. So, I'm going to come back with some white. My fabric. Fabric medium. And tone that down just a little bit. Let me wide angle you back out. So I'm just taking a little bit of white with my fabric medium. Taking that blue down just a little bit. It was just a little bit too bright. doling it down a little bit more like that. Just takes a little bit of paint to do this. Don't definitely don't need tons of paint. Okay, that's that's better. I may come back with another light layer of white on on the whole wing here in a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna add some highlights onto the legs here. So more black out. all over me. Okay, so I want to take my black and add some white. Make this medium gray color. And I'm going to highlight on the legs a little bit. Tops. Just kind of pity pat into some places. Don't go down the whole leg. You can come back. If you get too much, you can come back with some black and kind of take that out. And I'll probably take some of mine out. I feel like I've got a little bit more than what I want. A couple places. Some more here. All right, I want to go back into my yellow to try and blend that a little bit more. So, both of my yellows just mix them together right on my brush. back with my black one more time and then we'll be ready to add some highlights and some detail lines down the center and coming off the outer edges so I'm going to come down this way first and then reverse the painting and go back up I 
of it this way and then work on this edge. And this way you get a little bit more of a layered layered look on your bee where everything doesn't look like it's just a line going across there. Alright, I'm going to get my little liner brush back out and mix a little bit of water in here so I can get some little lines coming off the side. up on the tip of the brush so you can make nice fine little lines have your paint nice inky consistency so it will flow off nicely you can use the fabric medium to do the same thing as I'm doing with water, but I'm not too worried about using water. So it's definitely starting to look a little bit more like an actual bee. So we want to do the same thing with our yellow. And I want to take this yellow, which is antique gold, and a tiny little bit of black to darken it. More yellow because I don't want it to be that dark. Grab some water, set it down. Bring some of these off of the edge here. And I'll probably add a few lighter ones on here because these are pretty dark. So let me grab some white. Mix it in here. getting much flow with this. This yellow is so thick. can't get it to flow off my brush very well. Okay, he's looking pretty fuzzy. So let's highlight down the center here. Get some fresh white out. I'm just going to use my round brush here. Probably a 
add some black in there and take some of that down. Again, if you feel like you get too much, come back with the, the other colors and adjust it. Highlight on the legs. A little bit on the antenna. They're kind of small, so it's a little bit harder to get it on there on them. Put some of my flow medium out here. This antique gold is so thick. golden here. And maybe just a tiny bit of that bright yellow. Wipe my brush off and go into that bright yellow. Highlight out just a scooch. And then my black. And take some of this down. I don't have it be quite so. It's looking pretty darn good. Pretty easy little design here. I need to touch up my black right here. Kind of divide the, the head from or the upper section from the back body, but that's 
not working out so good. All right, let's do the wings with the glamour dust, and I think because the body is super dark that I might go ahead and reline the wings with my pen. And you could do this with a paintbrush as well. Now you want to make sure this is dry. It's mostly dry because if it gets in your pen, then your pen is not going to work. So you can save this line work till the very end if you want, but just make sure that your paint is completely dry. I'm thinking my paint was not quite dry because my pen didn't want to write right there. But if it's not dry, you will completely ruin your pen. So, and like I said, if you are good with detail line work, then go ahead and do this with a liner. That's the best way to do it. So now I want to put some glamour dust on here. Oop, that's not my glamour dust. Here's my glamour dust. This one's almost empty. Use this one. here. I don't want it to mix in with my paint. I love the glamour dust. Grab an old brush here. Glittery. Now you can mix this in with your fabric medium. I'm using the Ice Crystal Glamour Dust. They do make glitter paint, but I do not have any because I am painting this during the COVID-19 shelter in place and Decor is not shipping any. I had some ordered, but my order didn't get in before get processed before they closed the plant for safety for the employees. So I am improvising as we all can do in our painting. But if you have the fabric glitter, then you can use that. But you can easily turn this into fabric glitter by adding the fabric medium. I'm just putting it right on top here. And I've got a stencil I'm working on to put on here with this B. I want my B to get completely dry before I apply the stencil. And I'll probably apply a couple of coats of 
glamour dust on there. Man, I wish you could see that bling. I wish I could get it to show up well in the camera. You can see a little bit of it sparkling through there. I just absolutely love this stuff. It's just... If you know me, it's my all-time favorite product. I'm just using up the rest that I have squirted out here on the plate. You can apply as many coats as you want. I'm going to stay off of the bee. Just want to use it up. Don't want to waste it. Don't waste the bling. Don't waste the bling. Don't waste the bling. Don't waste the bling. My motto is bling it up. Oh, that's so pretty. So pretty. And they do make a, a, a glitter that has chunkier glitter in it, which you can also use on there. But isn't that bee just so cute? Now, I've got to get it dry, and then we're going to stencil on it and put it in the pillow form and see how it looks. Okay, I'll let my bee dry overnight. He's pretty dry. So now I want to stencil on some words, and this is my Be Happy stencil. I've got Let It Be, Be Yourself, Be Happy, Be Thankful. So this is a new stencil that will be on my website, and I've decided to put Be Happy on this pillow cover. So I've got happy across here. Hopefully I've got it pretty straight. I've just got it taped down with some scotch tape here. And of course my planks going across are not super straight, so... Hopefully that won't affect how my lettering looks. Because this is a pretty, pretty straight word. If I use one of these other ones, it's not quite as, you know, it's got more movement to it and I can hang letters down below and above. I don't want it right on that line. I want it in that space right there. Okay, so I'm just going to go for it. It's a pillow for me. Hopefully it won't turn out too horrible. Uh, I'm going to take my black fabric paint, put a little bit out. And I'm going to use a stencil brush for this. Um, if you don't have a stencil brush, you can use a makeup sponge. I do highly recommend that when you are done uh, painting with your stencil that you immediately take it to your sink and clean off the fabric paint. I don't know how well it will stick to the stencil. But you can use a makeup sponge and you just put a little bit of paint on there, grab some, tap it on the sponge out here, just to kind of disperse it because these sponge are not absorbent. So you don't want a ton on there, a little bit at a time, layers, light layers and then tap it straight up and down. Don't push it or mush it or try to squish it into the fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna use this stencil brush and I'm gonna get some paint in it. And work it into the brush. Okay, as you see, I pulled it out and moved it along so I could work it more into the brush and not, not let the paint just set on the end there. So I want to make sure I stay out of my other letters. So if you're worried about it, you can tape off any letters that are close by, just in case you might get it over. And then we're just going to lightly start applying our paint. So now we can see where we're going with it. Grab a little bit more, work it into my brush very softly. I'll probably have to paint my line across there. That is a super thin line right there to connect those two parts of the H. 
so I can come in with my identipan or uh, with my paintbrush and paint that line in. Just giving soft circular motions here. And I did move my cardboard up over to this corner so that I have that behind it. So be sure you do that if you're going to stencil on your fabric. That's looking pretty good. And take a peek. That looks pretty good. I like that. I'll connect to that H there. And then I want the word B right above it. So I'm going to tape that down. Put a little bit of piece of tape up here to hold it up here. I'll make sure my cardboard is all the way up. Is straight. It didn't quite look straight there. Okay, more black paint and we'll paint these letters in. And you can do as much or as little to this as you want. You can add some daisies around your flower. You can really be creative. The black paint off my finger here. I'm going to hold this part of the stencil down because it's a little bit loosey-goosey here. Just lightly. For your first layer, we just want to be light and get it kind of on there. I've got more paint in my brush now from using it down there, so these letters may not take as long to fill in. Alright, I'm going to hold this down. Stenciling on fabric. The stencil wants to move a little bit more than when it's on paper. Be careful, don't go out past your. So I'm going to take my, my stencil and my stencil brush to my sink and clean them out really well. Um, I'm going to use some hand sanitizer and just scrub it a little bit and then we'll come back and take a peek at it. Okay, so I got my stencil nice and clean. Just a little bit of hand sanitizer. didn't take very much and I used my stencil brush to scrub it and then a little bit of hand soap to uh, get the residue off and it took no time at all so I was able to clean my stencil and my stencil brush all at the same time. So now I just want to show you an option here on your stenciling if you want to do it. Now you can do this with the Identa pen or you can do it with a, a paintbrush. Now all of these places that are open in the letters I want to close up because I want it to look like a continuous letter. So I'm just going to paint and connect these letters These are called bridges and you have to have them in order to make a letter that has loops. 
or enclosed places. So I, I painted my line across there. So I'm going to connect to my P. Try and make a match. Now you do not have to do this. You can leave it the stenciled way. It's perfectly fine. So my P's don't quite match, but that's okay. So I need to get my lettering dry and then we're going to put our pillow form in here and see how it looks as a pillow. Okay, I've got my pillow form in it and this is what it looks like all done. I think it is adorable. Now this is one of the um, pillow covers that will be on my website soon and I have very limited supplies of each type of fabric. So I'm not planning on painting on too many um, pillow covers just because I want them to be available for you and the proceeds from these will go to help St. Jude's research. So. I think this turned out gorgeous. I love it. I hope you all like it too and enjoy painting it. So I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much everybody. Bye bye.